Actor and activist Sean Penn has directed a new powerful documentary about the war in Ukraine. In the film, Penn sits down with President Volodymyr Zelensky within hours of the Russian invasion. And he was also there to see the aftermath of the terrible violence and destruction. Let's take a look. The men of Ukraine, ages 18 to 60, were compelled to stay in country and get into the fight. Women and children dominantly occupied these miles and miles of cars, inching their way toward the Polish border. These heroic women set off to a different front line and the heartbreak of husbands, fathers, brothers, sons, and businesses all left behind. They fled for their children's safety. Many without any certain destination or support. Just three days earlier, they were you and me. So Sean Penn is joining us now to discuss the film and his experience in war-torn Ukraine. Thank you so much for joining us. That happens obviously very early on in the invasion when none of us really knew how long this would drag on for, how long it would go, and what, how, the, how Volodymyr Zelensky would handle this. Right? You start this documentary thinking you're just going to be doing a story on a funny actor guy who became you know, the leader of a country. Um, but he faces pressure. And pressure often fuels sometimes growth, sometimes greatness. Were you as surprised by the evolution of Volodymyr Zelensky as it seems like even some of the Ukrainians that you spoke to? Well, I, be, I want to be specific about this. Mm -hmm. um, we only met face to face the day before the invasion. I had met him on Zoom over the COVID period because as you say, we were going to do a sort of lighthearted take on this, or well, that was our anticipation. Um, COVID got in the way. By the time, and I had told him that I didn't want him to make a decision to participate or not in our documentary until he met me face to face. I'm, mm. I'm sort of that way. I, I don't rely on Zoom. And uh, because I wanted him to be um, not just a participant, but to be unguarded. I wanted to offer my trustworthiness and see if he felt that he could. And, um, because it, it, it would be something I could offer, you know, in a certain unique way, maybe because, maybe because of both being actors and, and it's not like a, you know, a journalist who's coming to pick something politically apart or something like that. So we met without a camera on the 23rd of February for the very first time, and he was very clearly very bright very warm, um, cool under pressure, because God knows there was a lot of pressure. The, the special military operation, as it were, had somewhat commenced in the East. But of course, in the East since 2014, there's been conflict. He had a lot more soldiers there. And then we went home, back to the hotel, to gear up, because he did agree to, to this, and I mm -hmm. thought we were going to uh, jive. And we were to shoot with him on the 24th, and we went back to the hotel, and in the middle of the night, the missiles started coming in. And I will say I was very surprised when we got the call from the president's office the next day that he nonetheless was going to go forward with the interview on camera, and we went. The moment he walked in the room, and call this, you know, my imagination, but it was, all of my colleagues felt the same. This warm, young, gentle, bright man we had met the day before was fully a wartime president. Mm. And the feeling in the room was that he, as if he was born for this, mm. he was ready. And it's a very emotional thing to see that kind of courage. He must not have even known himself what would have happened if that, from the time he was suddenly a wartime president? And it's a, you know, it's extreme history. Yeah. He's extreme history. This film has some incredibly powerful moments in it. You saw firsthand the brutal destruction and damage caused by the constant shelling from Russian forces. I want to play a clip that I think our audience will find interesting, and let's talk about it after. Yeah, this is not structurally sound anymore, is it? No. What can we help you carry? 
nothing. It's it's done. It's done. Okay. It's done. We took everything that we could. That's it. Welcome to my home. Just listening to her, it's almost as if she's trying to put on a brave face while she's showing you the destruction of her home. You talk to dozens of people in a situation that they could not scarcely believe, torn apart while trying to defend their loved ones, their homeland. What was your impression of the Ukrainian people amidst all of this? Forgive me if this, if this sounds a little umbrella, but it's, I think it is the thing that comes to me with that question immediately is that it's made me believe that, yes, while anger, brutality, um, random forcefulness, um, or even bickering, um, more likely than not are related to fear and a kind of cowardice. Um, I know it in my own life. And courage is a kind of, dem it's sort of the evidence that courage is a community event. And it's a conceit to believe that against real, real horror, any of us are individually brave. But whether it's in spirit or on a battlefield, when, or, or, or these mothers who are, you know, going up incredible, against incredible odds abroad, separated from their families, other guys on the front line, it, it, the unity that's there allows for a mass, it's a, it's, it's a mass courage society. Everyone. Mass courage society. I, this has struck me when the war started, right? The, the national anthem for Ukraine, which I'm sure you've heard, the opening line is the, the glory and freedom of Ukraine has not perished yet. Hmm. Everything about that national anthem is about the current fight for democracy and freedom. It's like an active thing. Yeah. And at the very end of the documentary, you make a little comparison, right? That you talk about Ukrainians finding a common cause. Right. And maybe that's something that we need to find as well. Yeah. Why did you want to leave the documentary with that line? The documentary. When I say we, I mean Americans. Yeah. So this movie is meant for, you know, it might be a surprise to people who follow me and, 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 and the, in some with a negative view because they feel I'm a, a lefty or what, whatever that um, I've some of my truly I have great friends with whom I agree about nothing politically great friends in politics in the Republican Party as I do in the Democratic Party I'm always a more likely Democratic voter but we've come to a place where we've got to look at the other side of questions as oversight to our side of yeah. questions and vice versa. Sean Penn, thank you very much for the documentary and the work that you're doing. Be sure to check out Sean's new documentary, Superpower, beginning September 18th on Paramount+. Plus. It comes from See It Now Studios, which is a division of Paramount Global. We should also mention Paramount is the company of CBS News. Stay with us.